Father, which enjoyed in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but the us from evil. God is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, young people, for opening this up. I thought y'all was going to pray for power. <laughs> That's an inside joke for those who don't know about that. God bless you. Thank God for each and every one of you joining us today. Thank God for our young people opening us in prayer today. They did, they did it about 80% of the way there. Y'all only hear them when they do their prayers now. They, they, they take it up. They take it in they take it up. But let's come on. Let's enter into praise and worship today. Let's stand to our feet. We have more than one thing always. But there are two that we're actually specifically praying. not praying for, but celebrating today, we're celebrating not only Father's Day, but we're celebrating our Juneteenth celebration amen, amen, amen. all weekend long. So come on, we can enter into praise and worship. We know this. I want to clap louder than before. Come on, you can clap your hands. Break 
Good morning and God bless you, brothers and sisters uh, that are here, those that are with us virtually. Praise God and welcome to the church, Charlotte. Amen. This is the church. Amen. We are the church. God bless you, your brother, Pastor Charles Carter, First Lady LaShonda Carter. Amen. Kayla, Layla, uh, Kaya, uh, all those that are with us uh, in person. Zaria, amen. Those that are with us virtually, amen. We thank God for you, amen. The people of God, amen. Thank God and praise God. It's Juneteenth, y'all. Amen. amen. We've been celebrating all week long, all weekend long even. Uh, our young people went out and we had a, had a bit of an observance yesterday and had a wonderful time with our brothers and sisters in Newton, North Carolina. Big city, Newton. Praise God for you, amen. Uh, so we just thank God for each and every one uh, that was there and uh, that we were able to be a part of that. Uh, the brethren and the sisters, all that were there. It was a wonderful time, amen. Uh, but today is the day. And happy Father's Day to all our fathers. Amen. 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 Whether, whether you're a biological father or not, a happy Father's Day to you. God bless you. Amen. amen. We're celebrating fatherhood. Amen. Yes. Celebrating manhood. Yes, we are. Amen. We celebrate everything else. Eh? But when it comes time to uh, celebrate manhood, I guess, you know, maybe we had our time, you know. So so we moved on to other stuff. Amen. But no, we thank God uh, for our fathers. Amen. Praise God for you uh, as we are continuing uh, in our uh, summertime and to continuing in our uh, worship services. Praise God for our brothers and sisters at University Place. Had a wonderful time with them last week. We celebrated with them Father's Day last week. Celebrating with our brothers here this week. Uh, and we just thank God for them. And thank God for what uh, he's doing there. Uh, praise God for Elder Wardell, amen. And Sister Sabrina and, uh, you know, all those uh, that, are, that are there uh, consistently uh, uh, there at University Place. Praise God for you all. Thank God for our, uh, our church uh, our church family, amen. And you know, it's, it feels funny like we hadn't been here in a while because we had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, we had we've had back to back services at University Place, and yeah. and I said, well, yeah, let's come on back to the church house, okay? Amen. <laughs> but praise God for you. Uh, so we just thank God. Join us this Wednesday. Uh, we're we're kind of doing our vacation Bible school in a bit of a different way. We kicked it off already. And uh, we're continuing, uh, continuing it all this month. Uh, we've been doing our word jeopardy, amen. Uh, you know, we're doing our we're doing our vacation Bible school a little different, uh, but it's, it's 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 fun, and I think we're getting we're we're enjoying it. Uh, the young people been been whipping their adults. <laughs> yeah, I, <hear> <laughs> I was laughing. I was laughing this past Wednesday. I said, man, the, the kids made some of the adults just log off. <laughs> You know, some of them was there at the beginning, you know, and then you could tell they was trying, you know. Right, right. Well, them kids was getting them answers so quick. Uh, you know, the dust was just like, the dust was like, man, forget it. I, you know, I, I just, I just watch and observe and, and, um, and, 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 and enjoy, you know. But we thank God for our young people to continue uh, to, to help build up. Bible says to train up a young person in the way that they should go. So that when they grow old, they won't depart from it. Didn't say they won't do things differently, uh, but it says they're not going to depart from it. Uh, you know, so, you know, we're, we're at such an age now where we're trying not to infringe upon one another and all that good stuff. Well, you got to get some training in there somewhere. Ain't, oh, I ain't getting no help right there. Uh, but yeah, we're getting that training in uh, so that we've got something to work with. Not that you're trying to, uh, you know, steer somebody, but you got to give them something to work with. Let me see you start a job uh, and do well with no training. No, you need some training so you can know which way to go. Amen. Praise today. Matthew, the 19th chapter. Grab your Bibles as we're jumping right into the scripture today. Uh, but join us this Wednesday. We're continuing our word jeopardy. Uh, we're continuing uh, with our door. The door prize is going to be awesome. Uh, and Sister Gabby uh, and the Thompson family has been, been ripping it up the last couple weeks. Amen. 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 She turned around and donated her. Donated her uh, her winnings back to the church. I said, "Oh my goodness! All right, she must be trying. She trying to get a plaque first lady. That's what that's what that is. You know, when you donate to the church, you know you're supposed to get you a plaque up on the wall somewhere. Lord Jesus, but no. Uh, join us this Wednesday. We're going to be continuing with that. Uh, so that's that's going to be a part of some of our vacation Bible school uh, activities that we're going to be doing all throughout the summer. You know, a lot of times VBS is about a week." And then you didn't have enough. It's like, all right, that's enough. No, we got to, that's enough. But no, we're going to be continuing some of these things throughout the, the summertime uh, so that we can, we can get it in. Amen. Matthew, the 19th chapter. 
We're going to read starting at verse 16. Matthew, the 19th chapter. As we're doing our, we're thanking God for all those that are, that are joining us today. If this is your first time joining us at the church, Charlotte, give us a hello and a God bless you, as always, that we might be able to do the same right back. This is a talk back church. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yeah, this is a talk back church. We don't, we don't, we don't uh, get, get too, too quiet or too, too set aside where we can't have a conversation during uh, the service. Matthew 19th chapter. We're going to start at the 16th verse. Got two different translations here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start in the King James. This is some good stuff here. Giving everyone time as you're getting, as you get it. Say I got it, Amen. Get put it in the comments. I got it. I'm ready. Yes, indeed. Matthew, 19th chapter. I'm gonna start at the 16th verse. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Trusty Rodney Thompson, Evangelist Nikki Thompson. Amen. Praise God for you. Minister Stacy Dukes. Amen. Praise God for you. Brother Jason Kirkpatrick. Good to see you. God bless you. Amen. Uh, Matthew 19th chapter, 16th verse. Starting at the 16th verse. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Verse 18. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Amen. God bless you, Sister Alicia Thomas. Good to see you. Uh huh. You know, first lady, you know, Sister Alicia, you know, we, we, need, to, we need to see Sister Alicia real soon, don't we? Amen. Amen. Verse 20, it says, What lack I yet? And I'm going to read this in the Berean translation too. The King's English doesn't, doesn't hit home like, like you wanted to sometimes. He said, Why are you? Well, I haven't done all this stuff. What am I still lacking? Verse 21, Jesus said unto them, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Uh oh. Verse 23. Then said Jesus unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Verse 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible. Come on, somebody, and you say where well, you are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed you. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto him, to them, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne in his glory, you shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 29, and everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands 
for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Ah, uh, yes, jumping back to the 26th verse in the Berean translation, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Come on, say all things, all things, all things. Yes, all things are possible. I'm here to encourage somebody's spirit today with the aid of the Holy Spirit that all things are possible. Yes, they are. Ah, uh, yes, all things are possible. With man, uh, things can seem uh, in some way, shape, or form uh, uh, insurmountable. We can get all of our various lists of things to do. And as we get our varying lists of things to do, uh, we can very quickly, uh, it, may, uh, it, it may seem to build up and stack up to a point that seems impossible. Come on, I, I need somebody uh, that looked at your list of things to do this weekend that you had been writing all week long and by the time Friday got here, uh, it was obvious that all these things that you had planned to do, it was going to be impossible to get it done, Lord have mercy. Uh-huh, yeah, I need somebody uh, to be honest with me and say you haven't had your list of things of where you were trying to be in life at this point. And uh, you had your list of uh, how things were going to go and uh, who was going to be there and what kind of things you were going to have on the wall and placards uh, and accomplishments that you were going to have. And uh, uh, you might even say, uh, as you were working on these things, uh, it seemed impossible. But God wants to encourage you today that with man, uh, these things that whether it's yourself trying to stack up to life's expectations or uh, otherwise, uh, they might seem impossible. Uh, but with God, all things are possible. Come on here. Uh, somebody needs to get that in their spirit today because what you're facing right now seems impossible. Yeah, what, what the occurrences that are happening in your life and in your family and uh, things that are coming your way, uh, even when you're making effort uh, to put everything in line and you're doing what uh, is expected of you to do, uh, they, but others are not doing what they are supposed to be doing, it can seem impossible. Why are certain things taking so long? Why are certain things not happening as uh, I would expect them to? Uh, my list doesn't look like uh, it's going to be uh, finished and checked off in the time uh, that I expected it to. Uh, well, I'm here to push somebody today. I'm here to build somebody's confidence today. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, we have to understand something. Uh -huh, that all things are possible uh, with God. Amen. You need to tell yourself that. Amen. Yeah, you don't need to get quiet now. You don't need to just uh, assess these things internally uh, when uh, the wars are raging loud and in your face all week long. No, you got to declare this thing out loud that with man it might seem impossible, uh, but with God all things are possible. Jesus is sharing this with this rich man. Uh -huh, he's been used to getting his way. Uh -huh. He's been used to using his resources and his connections to get what he wants. Now he's going to come uh, Jesus' way uh, to grab hold of what this new thing that they are seeing in the earth happening. Uh -huh. He's trying to figure out uh, what amongst his treasure trove will uh, meet the needs that Jesus uh, to allow Jesus to find favor with him. Yeah, I can see him offering, well, you know, Jesus, we can build you a church. Yeah, huh? Yeah, you know, we can we can get you a nice car to drive in. And, uh, you know, we can get you some people to help you out. And, uh, you know, whatever it is you need, I'm the one that's connected. 
So I just need you to tell me what it is uh, that I might inherit this uh, promise that you've been talking about. Jesus sends this man away uh, discouraged because he realized uh, that all that he had couldn't amount to what was necessary or needed uh, to be able to get what he wanted then at that time. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, I know uh, you have at this point maybe used how fine you are to get what you want. Uh huh. You've used your bank account to get what you want. Yeah, you've used other people you know to get what you want. Uh, but at this point, uh, this roadblock that you're hitting right now, Jesus is trying to get you to understand that what you got in your pocket in your mind or stored away somewhere is not good enough. It's going to leave you with a mission that's impossible. Oh my goodness. But with me, if you just trust me. See, yeah, yeah, that's why uh, all of these variances that, are, that people are experiencing in this day and age are happening. Because we're trying to do it on our own volition. Yes, we are. We're trying to do it of our own accord. We're trying to figure these things out. And when you get to a point where you're trying to figure it out so hard on your own, uh, you can lose your mind trying to figure out why all these various things are happening to you and around you. Uh huh. That's uh, your experience uh, as the rich man, I want you to know. Yeah, the rich man thought he could use what he had to get what he wanted. But then he realized that all that he had couldn't get him to where he wanted to be. Uh -huh. We've been trying to use what we have to get what we want. When Jesus is sharing, not only uh, with uh, the rich man, he's sharing even with the disciples that uh, you trying to do this on your own, you're going to find yourself uh, having problems. Lord have mercy. You're going to find
Jesus goes on to say, you need to understand that your reward is not only here, but it is in the hereafter. Amen. You're going to sit on thrones with me and you're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, this is a good teaching right here, because if you understand where this is in the passage, you'll understand uh, that something that's very interesting that happens here. Uh, what happens is that Jesus is talking to the 12 disciples. Before the crucifixion. Amen. 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 It's a little button. It's a little button there. Amen. 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 We're having to get that technical difficulty squared away there. All right. But nevertheless, Jesus is talking to Peter. Peter raises his voice and declares and says, if this rich man can't figure it out, if all that he has can't get him to where he's trying to be, what kind of expectation could we have? Where are we going to line up in this thing? Jesus encourages them. As his word is even encouraging us right now. You've got to understand that yes, you're building not only your treasures up uh, here on earth, but you're building your treasures up in heaven. Amen. Uh, that's not, and here's what we need to understand. That's not just something being done for some time off in the future. That is a resource in heaven that you can pull from when you realize you've reached your extremities. Somebody need to say amen right there. Yeah, there's, there's only so much fussing you can do. There's so, only so much training folk that you can do. At some point, you need to pull on your heavenly reserve and say, God, we need your help right now. Things don't seem to be working uh, as we would expect them to. But I understand that all things are possible with you. Come on, somebody say all things. All things. Right there. Amen. All things. Hallelujah. Now, as we move on, I'm, I'm moving on because I can't figure out what's going on.
Amen. As we're closing today, what God is trying to get us to fully understand, for those that are with us here, and for those that are with us remotely, the technical difficulties that we're having, where we're pulling off the pulling the sound system out so that uh, we can make sure that this message goes out and is heard in its entirety. God wants you to understand that all things are possible through him. Can y'all hear me all right? All right. God wants us to understand that all things are possible. The things that you are amassing on your own, uh, the lists and the things that are seeming to surmount to be too great to accomplish on your own really is just that. Amen? It's impossible on your own. Don't think it's strange. Don't think that, oh, I must be losing my mind uh, to, uh, to, uh, to try to accomplish all these things on my own. Yes, it's impossible on your own. But with God, all things are possible. Those that we were talking about this uh, before we got interrupted there, uh, the, the the home market and the, the various, uh, the land market, uh, it seems that we're being told that inventory is at a shortage and there's a scarcity uh, uh, and a lack of availability, amen? Uh, and here's what I noticed will happen. You know, we, we've been looking for land and didn't seem like much was available and we, you know, could get to a point where you could say, well, you know, um, well, my goodness, maybe what we're looking for is not available. Maybe what you're looking for doesn't even exist because that's the way it happens uh, when a little bit of scarcity can uh, be put in front of us. Uh, it can cause us to listen to the negativity of the enemy, to think that it's not possible, to think that uh, not only is it not possible, but that it doesn't even exist. You know, we've been looking around for land and you say, my goodness, we're looking for this uh, amount at this price that must not exist. And, uh, you know, I began searching and I started sending First Lady some uh, postings of other ones, not that we were necessarily looking in those areas, but here's what God said to me. Uh-huh, it's not that what you're looking for does not exist. You're just looking in the wrong state, Lord Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Uh-huh, yeah, your state of mind, you're in the wrong state. Yes, you are. Uh, because as the enemy tries to get you to think uh, that the scarcity or the that God not working things out as quickly as you would like to see them worked out, causing you to think that it's not possible. Uh-huh, you're in the wrong state. Right there, yes you are. Let your mind, let this mind be in you. According to Philippians, the second chapter, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, amen? If you get your mind in the right state, Lord have mercy, uh -huh, you're gonna be able to do more uh, than you ever thought was possible. If you get your mind in the right state, you're gonna be able to do not only what you have on your list, but even greater things, amen? Somebody say greater things, amen? You're going to be able to do more if you get your mind in the right state, amen? Yeah, you've got to uh, get yourself in the state of understanding that, yep, problems I'm having is because I'm trying to do this on my own. But if you just trust God, all things are possible. Come on, somebody say all things, amen? Somebody that's with us today. You've been doing this on your own. You've been trying to make things work out. And it's falling around your ankles. Yes, it is. And you're not able to understand why certain things are happening. Why uh, things are not working out. You put all the right things uh, in place. You put all your ducks in a row. And things are still maybe not happening uh, as you would like to see them happen. But God is letting us know today. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Why don't you trust God today? His word tells us in Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th and 10th verse. I know you've heard it before. I know you thought that was just something for grandma and them. Uh, you know, your cousin or your auntie. 
uh, that loves, all they do is go to church. So that stuff is for them. No, this is for you uh, and your wonderful self in the business that God has blessed you with. He can take it even further if you would just trust him. Amen. Uh, you and your family. Uh-huh, fathers. Uh, I know you think all your strength is all you need. No, but with God. He can take everything even further and bless it even the more. Yes, he can. Pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Christ today as your Savior, you can pray this prayer. Father, I know I've been doing it my way. Save me right now from my own way. I'm confessing with my mouth. I'm believing in my heart that you died for my sins. I believe that you were crucified, buried, and resurrected with all power in your hands. And with that power... You can save me from the very challenges I'm facing right now. I believe right now that I'm saved. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're amongst the household of faith. Uh, if you didn't get it all there, that's all right. Come on and hook up with the church, Charlotte, that uh, you might be able to get a better understanding. Bible says that in all you're getting, you ought to get understanding. Amen. Yeah, don't be just following, doing stuff just to do it. Uh, get understanding. Amen. Uh, why don't you join with us and uh, come and be a part of the church, Charlotte, that we might be able to follow God uh, who is possible, who makes all things possible. Amen. Uh, for those that are of the household of faith, you say, I'm a believer. Uh-huh. But, you know, I'm hitting some bumps in the road. Just like we did today. Uh-huh. Having our little service and hitting some bumps in the road. Uh, that doesn't need to stop you. You just need to move and remove what was causing the problem. Amen. Uh-huh. You as a believer, you got some things that are in the way. You got some things that are holding you back. You got some things that you're using as an excuse for doing less. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got some things in the way that you're utilizing uh, as a crutch to keep from experiencing God making all things possible. It's interesting that in many instances we would rather complain about how things don't work out than to do what's necessary for it to work out in our favor and for the help and assistance of even others. God's trying to let you know today that you don't have to be overcome by evil, but you can overcome evil with good. You don't have to continue in this state of experiencing the impossible not being possible. You can trust God today and say, you know what? I'm praying. I'm believing you. And then I'm putting my actions where my mouth is to experience the all things being possible. God, I'm trusting you right now. To make all things possible for me and my family, amen? For me and uh, my business or, you know, me and uh, whatever it is that you're putting your efforts toward. He can make all things possible today. Father, as we're closing, we're thanking you right now. God, thank you for working things out. Thank you, God, for even those that are, uh, have a will to do otherwise. You are changing the hearts of those that have a will to do otherwise. You're changing minds and changing conditions uh, that uh, things may line up for the good of them that love you and are called according to your purpose. Thank you right now for each and every one of us. Thank you right now, Father, for making all things possible. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Uh, we'll be with our brothers and sisters at University Place. Have a blessed week. We'll see you then. God bless.